What's up everybody? I'm back in my 98 Chevy pickup and today we're going to talk about the temperature gauge. Right, I'm trying to get a good shot of this temperature gauge and well, uh, lately what's been happening is, is this is about as far as the temperature gauge climbs in the truck and I thought that was kind of weird because usually it's about one or two clicks below 210. So what I've done, hooked up my cheapy little OBD2 plug-in, limit torque app, and I am actually reading that the coolant temperature is 177.8 degrees. So it gets up to around 181 and then the thermostat opens and then she drops down to right about there. So I'm at like 177 here that the PCM is seeing, but my gauge is always reading low, which is kind of weird. So let's see what we got. So how can we get two different readings from two different sources? Well, a little known fact about this truck, we have two coolant temperature sensors. So. Take a look right here. Now right here by the thermostat housing is the one that everyone says, oh, there's your coolant temperature sensor, you know, and they think that that's the only one. This one's noted because it has two wires coming out of it, a yellow and a black. And this is the one that the PCM uses. PCM is this guy right here. But what does the gauge in the dash use? It uses this sensor right here. This is screwed in right by uh, uh, the number one spark plug wire. It's got one wire that comes off of it and it goes into a connector right here. So what I think is going on and uh, you know this isn't scripted or anything what I think is going on is is that I have a problem with this little uh, temperature sensor right here but that's just my theory. I, I kind of have to prove that that's the problem. What happens is the way this works is is as the coolant gets hotter, the resistance of this sensor goes down and it makes the gauge move up hotter and hotter. So as the coolant heats up, the gauge moves up. That's pretty much how it works. But how do we know that the gauge inside the cluster isn't bad itself? Well, we're gonna test it and it's pretty easy to do. What I have here is a jumper lead I made up. So it's just one wire with conveniently has alligator clips on each end. So I'm just going to take one of my leads, I'm going to go to the battery negative, and I'm going to take the other lead, and go right here to this connector, pull back on this tab, and unplug them. And then, I can unscrew the alligator clamp and just set him in there. Now you notice I didn't force him in there, I just kind of just politely pushed him in there. So what we've done is we've totally bypassed this sensor right here. So when I turn the key on, what should happen now is the temperature gauge should go all the way hot. So let's see if that's exactly what happened. And you can see that thing swung <laughs> way past hot. <laughs> and uh, that's what's supposed to happen. So we know that there's not a problem with the gauge itself because it, it, it does have the capability to travel all the way to hot. So we're going to go ahead and just pull this jumper lead off. Just pull the little ground jumper off. Disconnect him from the battery too. Let's see what the gauge says now. Now the gauge is buried at cold, and that's pretty much what it'll do, you know, when you start up the truck first thing in the morning. She's buried all the way on uh, 100 degrees. Since the truck's already pretty hot, if I were to take um, the sensor connector and plug him back in, so we should be right around that first hash mark. And we're, we're one click below that first hash mark again. So we know by doing this test that we don't have a problem with the cluster or the little gauge motor inside of it. We can pretty much say that the temperature sensor itself is what the problem is. Now there is a way to test this temperature sensor itself, but the test procedure is kind of retarded. What they want you to do is put it in like boiling hot water 
with a temperature that you can regulate while reading the ohms of the sensor itself. So at ambient air temperature, it's supposed to be like 1300 ohms. At, you know, I think it's 215 degrees, it's supposed to be around 90 ohms. And at like 260 degrees, it's supposed to be about 50 ohms. Nobody's going to do that shit. I'm not doing that shit. All I'm going to do, I'm going to replace that sensor. But we're not replacing the sensor in this video. See, when I do stuff like this, and I put the test and repair in the same video, a lot of people get upset because they don't want to know how to test it. They don't care. They just want to be able to watch a video, replace a part, and have everything work. But the thing is, is let's just say we grounded that uh, connector and the temperature gauge didn't move at all. You can replace this temperature sensor a thousand times. It's not going to fix shit. That's why I support testing everything first, you know what I'm saying? So that's why we're not going to actually do it today. But I already have the sensor here. It's a pretty easy job to do, just to screw out your old and screw in the new. But we're going to save that for another day. The problem with this, I guess the biggest overall problem with this is if the truck really did overheat, okay, if the truck really did overheat, the gauge is not going to tell you that because there's a problem with the other temperature sensor. So the PCM could be screaming, hey, fuck, we're at 260 degrees and you're just going to keep on driving around like fucking New Jersey Drive or something, you know, because the gauge is saying everything's okay. <laughs> the best one is a motherfucker that replaced the sensor twice and that didn't fix it and then put a new fucking cluster in the truck and that didn't fix it and then you're just standing there scratching your head like you know the truck is possessed or the truck has electrical gremlins like fucking gizmos down there just fucking wrecking havoc and eating after midnight and shit you know what I'm saying <laughs> I'm serious now what you can't do with the gremlins you can't feed them after midnight, and you can't fuck with bright light, and you can't get them wet, you know what I'm saying? Isn't that like the people on Twilight? You couldn't do that shit to them? So, I fabbed up this little jumper lead, and all it was was two old multimeter leads. So I can, you know, configure this however I want. If I want two, you know, two probes, you know, I can just unscrew the alligator leads. And that's pretty cool. You can see there's there's really no science to this. Usually what happens is the little banana plug that plugs into your meter from just this wire flexing, this will just break off. And all I did was take two of them and kind of just splice them together to make my jumper lead that I showed you right here. This is a multimeter and then I just took a generic alligator clip attached it to the other end so I can use that to put uh, ground to something. Notice I didn't say power because this thing is unfused, so you won't catch me hooking it up to the positive battery terminal. Because, let's just say, I hook this up to the positive terminal, and I accidentally touch like this compressor, the sparks are going to fly and things are going to get hot, because there's no fuse through it. They actually even just sell just generic jumper leads that already have, you know, alligator uh, clips on it, and you can get them in different lengths or whatever. Like I said, I think a couple days ago in a video, you know, we got more and more people doing this kind of stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm compiling my own um, video for electronics stuff. And I know I'm not like the authority on electronics tools or none of that shit, but um, I want to just show what I got so that you guys at home can get some of this stuff to, to get better at what, you know, what you're doing, you know. What we showed today isn't specifically just for this pickup. It also covers those back in the day Tahoe's and Suburbans and their GMC variants too. So if you've got one of these trucks, you like what you see, you're into do-it-yourself repairs, you definitely want to subscribe to my shit. You know what I'm saying?